Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about absorption versus diffusion, or rather, when to use absorption or when to use diffusion. Because if you're just kind of in the journey of thinking about treating your room, you've done some research, you've obviously come across bass traps, you've come across broadband absorption, but you've also seen diffusers. And when you do some research on diffusion, you find out that a lot of clever people out there really think that it's uh, a, a good solution. It's something that is, is worth the investment. And so now you're wondering, when do you use absorption? And when do you use diffusion? In your particular scenario, what makes the most sense? Or perhaps if you've already done, done some treatment to your room, is it now time to think about diffusion? So in this video, let me walk you through my sort of thought process about absorption and diffusion when it comes to treating a typical home studio. So let me just start by kind of setting the frame here. And that is that this advice applies if you are looking for the kind of the fastest, the best route to get your mixes to translate, right? To get to a room sound, if you will, that you can really trust, where you can really trust your speakers, where you can make decisions more reliably and faster and ultimately get your mixes to translate better and faster, right? And to be confident in what you're doing. If that is your goal, then here's my thought process about absorption versus diffusion. Basically, for most small home studios, you want to stick to absorption because diffusion isn't the right tool for the job. And there are two main reasons for this. The first one is what the actual goal is that you're trying to achieve with the treatment and whether diffusion serves that purpose whether it's the right tool for the job. And the second part of it is whether you can actually use that tool in its intended form. So to put it real simple, let's say you want to eat soup. And the question is, is a fork a good tool to eat that soup, right? So that's thinking about the actual purpose of what you're trying to do and whether that tool takes you in, the, in that direction. And then the other kind of analogy here would be that you want to eat with chopsticks and the, whether you know how to actually use chopsticks, whether you kind of have the dexterity in your hands to do that. So that's sort of like thinking about whether the, you can use the tool as it's in, intended to be used in order to get it to work properly. So let's think about that first reason. So whether diffusion is the right tool for the job and if it actually takes you in the direction of what you're trying to do with your room. And the main thing to understand here or to know, and I'm pretty sure this is obvious to you, is that the main and the most fundamental thing that you have to solve in a small room is low end issues or base issues, which basically basically come from both standing waves and reflections potentially causing speaker boundary interference. Yeah, so those two things mainly will affect your low end and those are issues that you need to solve. And those are low end issues. Now the kind of one big secondary problem to that is that your room is small. And so in order to even have any chance at all at controlling or reducing the impact of these issues is that you use pretty much all and any available space that you can for bass trapping. And that's where the main problem with diffusion comes in. And that is that they only really work in the mids and highs, typically, at least if you buy something off the shelf. And even if you follow any of the typical, like the typical designs that you can find out there for DIY diffusers, they will work in a very limited frequency range, usually just the mid frequencies and the high frequencies. A quick way to estimate this is to look at the well depth and the well width of any type of diffuser. So the well depth will basically dictate the design frequency at which the diffuser works the best, if you will. That's also, also usually at the low end, if not the lowest frequency that the diffuser will work at. And the well width will determine the upper limit of where that diffusion works, 
Okay, so quick example, let's take your typical QRD diffuser that you can buy offline that might have a well depth of around six inches, 15 centimeters, and a well width of maybe five centimeters, two inches. Okay, so let's determine what the, the bandwidth of this diffuser is. Okay, 15 centimeters depth, twice that is the wavelength of the frequency that this diffuser works at to the design frequency okay so 15 centimeters times 2 is 30 centimeters that's the wavelength of the frequency of the kind of the lowest frequency that this diffuser works at a 30 centimeter wavelength conveniently works out to round about one kilohertz so that's the lower limit so the upper limit is the well width and with five centimeters two inches t again times two so 10 centimeters, and that works out to be around three to four kilohertz, okay? So that's the bandwidth we're talking about with just sort of your typical diffuser that you can buy off the shelf, roughly one kilohertz to four kilohertz. Yeah? And now you tell me whether you think that is the right tool for the job if what you're mainly trying to do above all else is base trapping, so anything below about 150 hertz. So now let's talk about the second reason why the diffuser isn't a good tool and that is just the fact that you usually can't use it properly because a diffuser needs a certain amount of space in front of it to develop its diffusion properly because it's a device that's based on interference of the reflecting energy and with a lower limit of roughly one kilohertz so 30 centimeters wavelength you want at least three times that of distance between the diffuser and any microphone, any speaker, yourself, if you're recording, whatever, you want at least three times that lowest diffused frequency or the wavelength of the lowest diffused frequency in order for that device to work properly. And so with a one kilohertz frequency, design frequency, roughly 30 centimeters wavelength, that's around about a meter, so about three feet. Yeah, And in many, many small rooms, you will actually be closer to any kind of sound source or, or a sound receiver with your panel. So in that sense, you're also very restricted in where you can actually place it properly. So in a nutshell, when you're talking about diffusion in a home studio, a typical diffuser that buy, buy, you can buy off the shelf will not work in the, the right frequency range. It will use up space that you need to work in the right frequency range. And it doesn't, you, you, you're very limited in terms of where you can place it just to get it to work properly. Obviously it's also pretty expensive in comparison to absorption, so there's that, yeah? But in, I hope that kind of shows you why for your typical small home studio, diffusion isn't really the tool, the tool to reach for, yeah? Now you, may, you might be wondering, okay, but what about all these, where are they? these diffuser panels that I have, these diffuser fronts on my panels and that I teach how to build in my Build a Better Bass Trap course and that you can also buy off the shelf from, from several com companies out there. So the difference with this type of diffuser is that it works higher up in the spectrum, right? So I've designed it, damn it, <laughs> I've designed it specifically to work further up in the range, in the, in the frequency range, so that you can use it in small rooms because you can get somewhat closer to any sound sources and sound receivers. But also, obviously, it's much simpler to build and you can actually combine it with absorption, right? So it doesn't necessarily waste any space like your typical off-the-shelf diffuser would do. So if you're interested to learn more about building your own diffuser fronts, make sure that you subscribe to my email list because that's where you'll be the first to hear when my Build a Better Bass Trap course goes on sale again. And the best way to get on my email list is to download my home studio treatment framework, which is my five steps to systematically treat a room and get it to translate. It's the kind of big picture framework, the top level view of how I approach treating home studios. And if you're in the process of doing that and you're kind of trying to figure out where to put your energy, what to focus on, how to pull the right levers, then this is the right guide for you. And as I mentioned, also the right place to get on my email list. So make sure you download my home studio treatment framework 
at the link in the description. So with that, as always, thanks for watching. Let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.